Hey there YouTube, I'm Bubbins, and recently I was looking through the popularity stats Digital Extremes released earlier this year, which breaks down the entire community's preferences over the course of 2022. When I was examining this, and I know I'm late to the party here, they were released like four months ago, it became clear that there are seven frames which barely anyone uses. And I found myself wondering, if these are somehow like universally agreed upon to be the quote unquote worst frames. I say worst in quotes because Warframe weapons and such have been power crept to oblivion to the point of anything being completely broken if you spend enough time investing into the best possible loadout. For what it's worth, the data that they used only tracked for Warframes that were rank 30 or higher therefore removing folks who were only using said frame to level it up. And the devs do say, obviously, that this list isn't meant to be a kind of tier list, but surely usage numbers mean something, right? With things like this, a lot of it really comes down to where you draw the line when examining it, right? Technically, the bottom five positions are all frames which are yet to receive prime versions. That's Grendel, Varuna, Caliban, Savagoth, and Ureli. But I don't think it's quite fair to include those just yet. They're all relatively new and there's no way to simply buy them outright if they really are good. So for now I decided to focus on frames that have a prime version available and to add the base and prime version popularity together to get a more representative version of the overall popularity. Almost every Warframe in the game, when regular and Prime versions are combined, have a popularity of at least 1%. Ember and Valkyr are at like 0.99 and 0.93, but for the sake of this list, let's round them up to 1. So when you look at the numbers that I put together, there's a slight jump from them down past Hildren and Lavos, who didn't have Prime versions in 2022, to Equinox and Oberon, who do. Both of them are hovering around a 0.7% popularity mark, which means they're clearly not bottom of the barrel, but they're also noticeably behind most other frames. After that, we go down more past Nidus to Baruch, Atlas, and Banshee, all of who barely managed to stay above 0.5%. What's really interesting down here is Baruch, who is one of the only Warframes in the entire game where the basic version is more popular than the Prime. The others are Mag, who is significantly more popular than her Prime, and Korra, who is up by like 0.01%, so basically the same. I don't know, it's just, it's an interesting fact. It's like one of the only frames in the entire game. Meanwhile, thanks to the Prime version, Atlas isn't at the bottom of the pile, but that 0.08% of people using a level 30 Atlas is just plain sad. The only other frame below the 0.1% mark is Trinity, but at least she has a prime version that is slightly more popular which saves her from being down here in the doldrums. After passing Geyer, we reach the two least played Warframes in 2022, which are Hydroid and Nyx. Now I'm not surprised to see Hydroid here, we've talked multiple times about how that frame has been power crept to oblivion. It's wild, really, to think one of his abilities is essentially just turning into a puddle. Compare that to all of the powers we have now, just wild, he really needs an update. And obviously there is the fact that Necros has taken his throne as the farming Warframe. As for Nyx, what's there to say about Nyx? Nyx is one of those frames I forget even exists. I took a few year hiatus from Warframes, so I do forget some like Lavos that released during that window. But Nyx has been around forever and just nothing. Nothing. Not a single solitary thought to be had about that frame. I can't even remember the last time I saw a Nyx being played in the last 100 to 200 hours. If you're curious, here's the data I put together. What are your thoughts on it? Any surprises? While you're looking that over, please make sure to leave a like or subscribe. As a small channel, it really does make a big difference. And if you want to directly support the channel, there's a Patreon linked in the description below. 
or you can become a channel member right here on YouTube. For now though, I think that's it. I'll see you next time.